Hey friends, welcome back to Bubbly Balloon Co. My name is Rachel. This is just a quick tutorial on how to use Orbs balloons. I'm gonna share with you all the things that I wish I knew when I first started working with them because they can make such a difference in your balloon creation, your garlands, walls, whatever you're making. And uh, they can be a little confusing at first. So I'm gonna show you how to work with them, how to inflate them, all the different ways you can attach them, stuff like that. When you first get them, they come in these little flat packs, whether you are getting the brand name orbs, whether you're buying them on Amazon, which is what these are here. I have, I think, three different sizes. So let me go ahead and open them up and show you what they look like. So we've got all these different little silver guys in here. They're just these flat kind of like oblong shaped dudes. And then it also comes with a straw, which you can use to inflate or you can use a manual pump. If you have one of the special commercial pumps that's specifically made to inflate foils, you can use that. Personally, I don't. I think they start at a couple hundred dollars, so I always just use a little manual guy, um, but the straw works great too. So these are seven inch. This one here is 22 inch. Yeah, there's a little bit of a size difference there, wouldn't you say? It's like a shark and a fish. <laughs> Look at that. And then this one is unlabeled, but I have a feeling it's like 18 inches. So let me take a look at that. Oh yeah, perfect mid-size. So that's gonna be an 18 inch right there. Personally, I love using a variety of orb sizes and designs because I think just like using latex balloons when you have that difference, like the variance in sizes, I really think it just makes it look so much more professional. It really draws the eye in and it's so much more aesthetically pleasing to see those different dimensions, you know? Okay, you're probably wondering how something perfectly flat like this is gonna come out looking perfectly round. So let me just show you what to look for. Um, you usually have like a top and a bottom. Um, sometimes they come with these little things you can like hang them from the ceiling with fishing line or whatever, these little kind of tabs, but there's always gonna be an offshoot, this tab with a valve on it. A lot of times it's got a plastic insert in there that's colored and that's where you inflate. So all you need to do is slip the tip of your nozzle in there, get it under that plastic insert, Okay, nice and like a tight fit in there, kind of deep. Wrap your fingers around the pump and give it a few pops. Now, once you get to this point, you see there's these wrinkles around the seams. You wanna give it a few more pumps. You can use the straw, but usually for these last couple, you know, bits, you do need a manual pump because you need a little bit of pressure to push more air in there. Um, they say that you can, get the wrinkles completely gone, make it perfectly round. I'm not quite brave enough to do that. I'm always worried I'm gonna put too much air in and pop it, um, but I probably should just try it one day and see what happens. I have seen other artists, you know, push further than I would, but you'll see as we, as we go ahead and inflate these last couple pumps here, those seams really, those wrinkles around the seams really disappear. Look at that. <gasps> Perfectly mirrored and gorgeous. Can you see that? Okay, so on the valve, it is self-sealing. I just give it a good, you know, press so I feel good about it myself. Okay, and just like that. And that's the same for any size. Super simple to inflate. Now I'm gonna be honest, this brand is not Orbs. This is a brand I found on Amazon, which I'll link below. I can't actually see through the balloon. When it's up close, it is translucent. But at the same time, it's highly reflective and I doubt many people would notice. Um, if you have that in a design, I really don't think many people would notice that at all. I always like to tell you what I'm seeing just so it's not a surprise when you get it if you notice the same thing. But I do think that very few people would notice that. As always, I'm gonna be putting them into my trusty little fold-out hamper here. Okay, I'm gonna inflate some more. It's like a freaking Christmas tree ornament, huh? So pretty. Man, that sounds terrible. <laughs> it's okay, buddy, I'm sorry. So this is the 18 inch inflated compared to, compared to the seven inch. Okay, huge difference, obviously. And then I'm gonna go ahead and inflate a 22 inch so you can see that as well. Now I do wanna point out that when this is, it's flat, obviously, when you, when you get it, and when you start inflating, the panels seem to almost like burst from one another because they're actually kind of sealed or connected usually. So these flat panels start to come apart. The first time I inflated one, I thought I was breaking it, you know? So 
Just want to warn you to look out for that as you as you're pumping, it's gonna start separating and coming apart, looking really weird. Look at that. <laughs> Let's a pair of lips with like a dumpling or something. Okay, and then sometimes as you're inflating, one side hasn't popped open yet, so it's kind of like a three-sided balloon. Very noisy on this one. So there's another 18 inch. Just a reminder that you can't actually use a regular pump on these. One, it doesn't really work, but two, the heat that it generates will kind of melt and destroy the self sealing structure inside the nozzle. So don't use that. Stick to the manual. It does give you a bit of a workout. They also include straws if you'd rather blow it up by mouth, but it's not easier. The way the packages come up, the ones that I ordered, the smaller the package, the more balloons are in them. So I think on the seven inchers, I think there's eight. On the 18 inchers, I think there's four. And on the 22, I think there's only the two. So I can honestly use like half of a package of each on, on most jobs on, you know, on an eight or 10 foot garland. And that's pretty much sufficient. So I like that I get two uses out of them as well and that it's evenly spaced, if that makes sense. Okay, the 22 here, this is a big sucker, okay? This is gonna take some uh, some muscle here, so bear with me. I'll be honest, I'm getting tired. Let me try the uh, straw method, see if that helps. Okay, that's about as far as you can go. Blow this up with a straw. To get these wrinkles out of the seams, you're really gonna need to use a manual pump that can just drop more force in there. Okay, that is pretty good. So this is the 22. This is the 18. Dwarfs it. You guys, this is really big. This 22 absolutely dwarfs the 18. Look at these two, they're massive. So we've got the seven inch, the 18 inch, the 22 inch. And between them, you're gonna get so much variety in your garland, it's really gonna be gorgeous. So let me show you the different ways you can actually attach these. Now on this large one, it also has this little tab where you can hang it. Personally, um, you have to, I think you'd have to have a really, really large space, like a huge loft, warehouse, barn, something like that, to suspend many of anything other than the sevens. But if you were going to, I'd probably recommend starting with the sevens. And all you're gonna do with that is cut off some fishing line and tie it from either the top or the bottom. And as well, if you're doing that, I would use a glue dot or some sort of adhesive to go ahead and keep that um, valve stuck down to the side of the orb so you don't see it. Okay, so I've got a little length of clear fishing line. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick it through that little tab, tie a gentle knot. Now I say gentle because this foil can still tear kind of easily. So if you put too much pressure on it, if you start to yank it, it'll definitely tear a hole in that and you won't have your attachment point anymore. So just be a little gentle, but do tie it two or three times at least to make sure it's pretty secure. Okay. And look, you can hang that from a ceiling. You can, like I said, tape that valve down, but that's gonna look absolutely freaking magical. These orbs come in so many colors. They come in um, silver, gold, purple, blue, pink. I've seen them in so many colors. I think marble, zebra, all sorts of stuff. So no matter what theme you have going on, this will just make a fantastic accent to the space. Okay, another way you can attach these is by taping the valve to the garland. So you can use either duct tape or gaff tape. Now gaff tape is a little easier to remove from other balloons without popping them and reposition it, but I would caution you to be super careful either one you use because if it gets on the wrong balloon, you've pretty much lost that balloon. Okay, so all you do is take a little length of gaff tape. And again, I'll link the ones that I personally bought down below if anyone's interested. You just take a little length of it. Go ahead and attach that to the valve itself. And then from there, you go ahead and tape this in behind the balloon you're attaching it to. So if that were this balloon, I would just go ahead and gently place that there and tape it on. And this gap tape is much easier to remove than duct tape and a lot of other ways of tying in balloons. Okay, 
So here to demonstrate on the table, if this were a garland, <laughs> there you go. I would just tape it in right like that. And if I need to reposition it gently, I can. It sticks well to the balloon, but it's pretty easy to remove from a lot of surfaces. So I really, really love the gaff tape method. Duct tape also works. And um, yeah. Okay, now we all know I love 260s and 160s, and you can definitely use these to tie in your orbs to your balloon design. So go ahead and make a little loop in your 260 or 160. We're gonna go over to the nozzle where the orbs has been inflated. Go ahead and wrap that around. You wanna be a little gentle but firm, if that makes sense. You don't wanna go, you don't wanna put too much pressure on the balloon that it pops. You don't wanna put too much pressure on the foil that it rips and you lose your seal, okay? You just wanna firmly have a hold on it so when I go into my balloons, I can wrap this around my latex balloons and it'll sit pretty firm. The one challenge with these is getting them in deep enough in the right spot in the latex that you don't have a gap between the latex and the base of your orbs. You want this to really sit and sink in there or on top of it in a way that you don't really see space between them. Okay, that's my one like caution for you when you're using this method. Whether you're using gaff tape, duct tape, fishing line 260s, 160s, whatever you're using to bring those beautiful orbs into your garland, I hope it goes fantastic. I wish you the best of luck, and I hope these tips help you make something beautiful. If you're enjoying this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. I do put out new tutorials and creations twice a week, every week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Wrap your fingers around the pump. Oh. My dogs are freaking out now. It's okay, sweetie, I'm so sorry. Whether you're using fishing tape, 